Hey guys, Corbin here, and I'm going to show how I reskin my sear wheel or skin it for the first time. First of all, let's talk about what materials you're going to need. And I like to skin it with an air compressor, it makes it a lot easier. We need some tubing to replace your current tubing. I'll show you where I get it for my particular tubing to fit my wheels, and it'll be in the comments of the video. And you have to just cut the tubing. A little bit longer than your thing that you're going to actually skin. Having a little extra is a little a lot nicer. And when you cut it, it's nice to compare it to the outer diameter of the wheel. If you compare it to the inner diameter of the wheel, you might cut it a little bit too short, and that might not be too good. Cutting it is easier with something like a hacksaw or a coping saw. It cuts through the plastic really easily, but it's not required. You are going to need some type of razor blade or knife or utility knife or exacto knife, the sharper the better. What I have here is a little insert I made, and this insert goes in the tubing. It's just a simple piece of aluminum that I turned on the lathe, drilled a hole and tapped it to fit a air tool, and that way I can put some compressed air over it. I'm going to clamp it on, and that will allow me to slide the tubing over with air. In order to prevent the air from coming out the back side of the tubing, Sorry, of the actual sear wheel about the tubing. I need to have something to block the air, so I made another little insert that goes in here. You could actually use your existing sear wheel um, guys in here and take them out before you complete it. That will work too. You'll need some tape to tape over the holes, otherwise air escapes from them. So, what do we do? After I cut this to size, first I stick it in the oven for about three minutes, any longer makes it too elastic and makes the tubing loose. I stick the oven on a low temperature, like say 100, 150. So I'm gonna go put it in right now, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, while well, the tubing's heating up in the oven for a few minutes, I'm going to prep the sear wheel. I'm going to just take a little bit of tape and put over some of the holes so the air doesn't escape. And the things to remember is I'm going to be pushing some tubing over, I'm going to rip the tape off here, and then rip the tape off here. So to do that, the second one needs to be taped um, last. So I'm going to tape this guy and kind of fold the tape back so I can more easily rip it off really quickly. And do the same with the front hole. Cut the front hole nice and tight and make it so I can rip the tape off because I don't want the tape on it. This makes sense when you watch me do it. The little block for the air in the back can just be tapped in a little bit. And that's going to prevent any air from going through on this side, and I'm going to skin it from going this direction. Now with the tape, uh, I should have put this on my tubing before I put it in the oven. I'm gonna have to do it after, but it's not a big deal. It just softens up the tubing a little bit. If you have trouble skinning, you can use water. You can take a spray, spray gun or something, and spray a little bit of water, or just rinse some water on it, and that will help lubricate a little bit. Maybe some soapy water. I really don't like getting it wet if I don't have to, because getting it wet means it's gonna actually slip and oxidize more, and that is not good. Ideally, you need to slip it on dry. Pulled out of the oven, I'm going to put the insert to do the air on. I should have done this before, put it in the oven because it's cooling down. These are just pipe clamps to hold it on, and it's going to be loud in just a second as I use air to flip it on. Air compressor, it's just going to blow uncontrollably. I put it up to 60 psi. Didn't put that 
down tight enough. Yeah. 